So you entered a calorie deficit, started losing weight, but then at some point you hit a wall. Scale isn't moving down anymore. You're not seeing any changes and the frustration is slowly building up. Now, before you jump into a seven day fast or you go keto or do something even more extreme, I wanna share with you a rational, no BS approach for handly weight loss but those that every single person looking to get lean needs to know. So let's dive right into it. When a calorie deficit stops working, I like to view this as an engineer. We don't panic, we don't get emotional, we troubleshoot and we problem solve based on available data. And the way I see it, there are three types of weight loss plateaus that you could have and each one of those is handled differently. Now, starting with what I call a type one plateau, these are your water weight changes. In human adults, about 60% of our bodies are water. So if you weigh 200 pounds, about 90 kilos, that means that 120 pounds or about 54 kilos of your body is just water. So 1% of change in body water is already a 1.2 pounds or about a half a kilo change on the scale. So it shouldn't be a surprise that if you had a meal with more sodium, typically when eating out, that there's going to be a difference in the scale the next day. Also, on average, we store about 100 grams of glycogen in our liver and about 500 grams of glycogen in our muscles. And with each gram of glycogen stored, we store three grams or more of water. So if you had a day with more carbohydrates, and more sodium that can quickly add up to showing an even bigger difference in the scale. And that retained water is not just gonna disappear overnight. It takes some time for your body to get rid of it. And when this happens, most people tend to panic and they automatically assume they just gained a bunch of body fat. The reality is they could even be losing body fat, but they can't see it in the scale due to all these water weight fluctuations. So how do you know if you're dealing with a type one plateau? Well, this type of plateau tends to happen all of a sudden. Everything's going well for you, but then you suddenly stop losing weight or you might even gain weight despite having the same calorie intake. And it's typically linked with other areas of life as well. You might have more stress, sleep disruption, travel, or you're eating different foods compared to your normal routine. And we also need to keep in mind that some people naturally retain more water weight than others. And if that's you, then this journey of losing body fat will probably have more ups and downs and it will feel like a roller coaster at times. This is why I recommend that you give yourself enough time if you had an approach that worked before you start making big changes to your diet and training. A water weight plateau can last up to a couple of weeks, but if you trust the process, you make sure to hit that like button, eventually, more often or not, you get that quote unquote whoosh effect, flush out the water weight, and suddenly you see a new low on the scale. I've seen clients drop four or five pounds or two and a half kilos overnight, and then an extra two, three pounds or about a kilo and a half over the course of the week. The most important thing is don't panic, don't start giving up, stay rational, observe, and give your body a chance to stabilize. Now, the second type of plateau we need to talk about are changes in behavior. And these can either affect energy input, energy output, or both. So let's break it down. With the energy input side of things, the biggest and most common problem I see are people getting lazier with food accountability. They start really strong, dial things in, see some results, but then over time, things loosen up. Food log is half empty and tracking is inconsistent. There are unplanned snacks, licks and bites, which are never accounted for. Weekends are a lot more relaxed and you think you can catch up, but you never do. In the kitchen, there's a lot more guesstimating, a lot less weighing, and all these extra unplanned calories quickly add up, get you out of a calorie deficit, and you end up stuck. And I've seen the same thing happen with activity levels. People will get 10,000 steps per day, they're planning their walks, everything is going great, but then eventually they start slacking off and getting only 5,000 steps per day. And all this is a sign that you're less and less committed to the process. And the thing is, the leaner you get, the process itself is getting harder and harder. So lowering your commitment level is the exact opposite of what delivers great results. And this is where honesty, self-awareness and accountability come in. I'm not saying you need to be 100% rigid and dialed in for the rest of your life, but I am saying if you've been stuck at the same weight now for four to five weeks or in multiple months, and you know you're not giving it your best, well, the honest truth is you need to tighten things up and recommit if you want to reach this goal. Now, the third type of plateau we need to talk about is metabolic adaptation. Simply put, you were in a calorie deficit when you first started, but then over time, as you lost weight, your metabolism has adapted. And the degree of that adaptation is unique to you. Some people have a much more adaptive metabolism than others. So how do you know if you're dealing with this type of plateau? Well, the first thing we need to do is look at your data. If you've been losing weight for several months now, and you've been doing a good job with keeping track of weekly averages, what you're gonna notice is that your rate of weight loss has been getting slower and slower. So initially, maybe you lost 
1% of your body weight per week, and now it's even less than half a percent of your body weight per week, or maybe nothing. Despite the fact that you stuck with the same calories, macros, and activity levels, and you've been very consistent. Now, the second sign of metabolic adaptation that you might notice is a reduction in NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And these are very subtle changes. You might notice that you're not fidgeting as much or tapping your foot on the floor as much or that your body is getting a little bit more sluggish, it's leaning onto furniture, it's kind of entering this battery saving mode and it's looking for every opportunity it can get to save some energy. And it's important to know that this type of adaptation is completely normal. The fact that you're dealing with a plateau that's caused by metabolic adaptation is a sign that you've successfully lost weight using a calorie deficit. But it also means that what got you to this point will probably not get you all the way to your goal, so you need to consider making some adjustments. That can be either lowering your calorie intake or increasing your step count or a combination of both, or consider doing a diet break to maintenance calories for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months, which isn't a bad idea, especially if you lost a lot of weight, and then you re-enter that calorie deficit later. The thing with a type three plateau is that you can see it from a mile away. It is very obvious in the data, and this is why you should be keeping track of your body weight averages, step count, waist size, and your food intake. This data set is essential to inform you when and how to make calorie adjustments as you go through this process of getting leaner. The other thing that's gonna help you get leaner is making sure to subscribe below. Details for coaching if you want to work with me on your fitness journey are in the description as well. I'm also going to leave another helpful video here for you at the end. So check out that video and I'm going to see you right there.